Hello everybody and welcome back to the Yellow Squared podcast. It's myself, Ned, and I'm of course joined by my brother James. Good evening, James. How are you? Hey mate, good evening. I'm very well. How are you getting on? Yeah, I'm I'm getting on pretty well, pretty damn well since the season's finished. And of course, this is the episode where we look through the season in total. So, we'll get things started with the preseason. And in the preseason, it feels like a million years ago, but Ooh. of course, Rob Edwards was appointed. And uh, in the in the most Watford way possible, he was of course appointed uh, by sort of being stolen from Forest Green without the owners of Forest Green knowing. There was of course a lot of controversy, but nonetheless, August came and uh, Rob Edwards was at the helm. So, James... Mm. We'll go through. We'll talk us through. Talk us through August. Well, yeah, and I think I'll happily talk you through August. I think I just to jump on um, what your your little intro there about kind of the preseason and and uh, the the vibes. It, it really felt like, and I think it's important to to touch on this really when we're talking about the season as a whole because I think we'll allude to it a lot. Mm. But you're you're right with with the appointment of um, Rob Edwards. Yes, it, it felt like the club had, at the time, learnt its lessons from that terrible Premier League season. We'd we'd gone out and gone and found the person we wanted. We'd kind of, not not well, not sort of bullied our way through, but we 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 earmarked the person we wanted. Mm. We went and got him in. We were going in a new direction, a young progressive manager, um, who we were going to give a chance. We had the Elton John concert and there was a lot of positive vibes. And I think that carried over from pre-season into, into the start of August mm. um, where we started. Well, I was at the opening day uh, with, with um, my good, my good mates and uh, we won one nil Sheffield United. It was a great, it was, it was a good game of football. We looked threatening on the counter attack and the atmosphere mm. inside the Vic was was really good that day, and and when when Jao Pedro scored uh, that that goal from that you know wonderful counter attack from a Sheffield United corner, yeah, you know the whole place erupted and, and we hung on. And I remember leaving there, leaving that day, thinking, wow, you know, Sar Jao Pedro. We had Dennis at the time. Um, there were a few players playing out of position, notably Kamara was playing on the right, mm. and Semer on, Semer was out on the left wing back. We were playing this back back three, sort of this wing back system that, that Rob Edwards sort of um was uh, renowned for from his time at um at Forest Green. And uh, you know, we uh, we we came out, out of the way of that that game on a real high, you know, we knew Sheffield United were gonna be a good team. They they threatened us because they were a good team, but we looked pretty comfortable and, and we gone we came away and we got the result. And especially when the fixed list came out, we looked at the opening few games of the season and we were sat, you know, we were sat thinking, "Cool, we've got a bit of a tricky, tricky opening mm. uh, set of fixtures." Um, when you when you looked at the fixture list, and, and then you know we we went on West Brom, Burnley. We had games against uh, Birmingham and Preston away, uh, and then and then a couple of other games towards the end of the season, which which we'll come to in a minute. And um, it was a tough start, but you know we were unbeaten from five. Uh, we had the SAR goal of the season yeah. uh, against West Brom. We hung on for dear life in that game, but we missed the penalty to to win the game. Yeah, two we could one. have won it. Um, and then we had that Burnley game, which you know cleverly scored just before half time, and and that, that seemingly ended his season because yeah. uh, he got injured, he got injured in that. Um, yeah, yeah. In, in that move, uh, and then we had the Kamara red card, and we were again backs against the wall. So, I, you know, I think for me, you know, we started the season really dogged. The team was working hard. We weren't particularly fluent going forward, you know, and probably foreshadowed the rest of the season. Uh, but, you know, we, we got results. And, uh, you know, in, in amongst all of that, we had Ismail Assar signing for Villa, then not. Uh, we signed Courtney Hawes. Um, remember him? And then <laughs> we had <laughs> and then we had three three home games when end, end the month. The cup game against MK Dons, which I was at. And then we had the QPR loss, and and then the Middlesbrough win for the hundred years of the Vic, which again, I was at. Uh, and I, but I must admit, if I, if I'll just touch on the the cup game, I know in our ten season of the Potsos pod we spoke about how awful um, we 
we've been in the cups. Mm. I was I was at that game, uh, and I think that was the first time that I kind of thought, oh, maybe something's not quite not quite right. Um, I know it was a much rotated side. We saw Okoye the, for the first time. I think Gaspar played for the first time. There was it was a rotated squad, but it was a really really poor performance that that evening. I, I remember that vividly. We got sort of just bullied off the park um, by MK Dons, uh, and that was kind of the first time I thought, well, maybe something's not quite right yet. But then, you know, we 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 finished the month with a, an amazing win at the the hundredth um, year of the of the Vic celebrations with uh, with the crow bagging in the in the ninetieth minute yeah, to uh, the crow. To, to win. And you know, I think the month ended on a bit of a on a bit of a a bit of a high. You know, yeah. we were we finished fourth. <laughs> You know, we we were fourth at the end of the month, played seven, and got twelve points from it. Mm, mm. Uh, and it and it just sort of felt like, okay, yeah, yeah, we're doing all right. We're a little bit um, in sort of first gear, struggling a little bit, but we're we're grinding out the results where we need to, and, and now we just need to kick on. Um, the transfer window closed, and the squad was well, it felt like it was really solid. Um, but yeah, that was that was my take on my take on August, mate. Yeah, uh, well, I, I agree with all of those statements. I just thought it was um, interesting to say that QPR at home was a bit of a, a bit of a weird one. I think we didn't really deserve to lose three uh, two. We had that goal from KMB, which was uh, ruled offside, but not offside, and and yeah, I, I think the the overall vibe at the club was fairly positive. We obviously. I think watching the West Brom game and the Birmingham game, I just did mm. feel a bit like, you know, I thought we'd be dominating the games a bit more than we would like a bit bit more than we were, um, maybe foreshadowing what was what was to come from, from the this really sort of fragile mentality of the team. But mm. I thought, you know, at the end of August Maybe that could have been the moment to kick on um, out of first gear and and move on uh, into the season, just blitz the league, which the team on paper probably should have been looking to do. Mm. But then we also we also forgetting just just we're also forgetting that um, August was the month of Raymond I scoring his first of goal. <laughs> of course, no, you're you're fine to jump in. Rayman I, the uh the Watford legend. Great is number course, nine. Of course, getting that that uh final touch on that Ken Semmer strike which completely wrong footed the goalkeeper and uh <laughs> found its way into the bottom corner and uh, <laughs> I think we should have noticed from the way he willed away in celebration that he was not accustomed <laughs> to scoring many goals. <laughs> But we'll move on to September, where the wheels look to uh, look to be falling off a small amount. So we started with a one-all draw away at Rotherham. Uh, we were both at this game. It was my first game of the season, um, yeah. so it was nice to nice to finally get there. Uh, we've already been to the to the uh, Rotherham Stadium before. The New York Stadium, yep. um, so it was nice to go back, get a point. Yeah, we probably should have won that game. Uh, really poor to concede so early on, and then it was a goal, wasn't it? yeah, it was a pretty poor goal. And of course, Richard Wood uh, hit the gritty after that. So my mate is a Rotherham fan. <laughs> Absolutely love that. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and after that, we caught we sort of. Um, put in the first real 0 out of 10 performance of the season, if I'm being honest. Mm. Blackburn Rovers away. The team did not turn up. I remember Dan Backman sort of apologising to the uh, to the fans that had travelled all all that way. Um, midweek game, though, wasn't it? Midweek, yeah, um, with a lot of train strikes and all sorts of nonsense going on. And then, yeah, the, the, uh, the final game of the month was that two-all draw with Sunderland, which we should have probably won again. So yeah, the results on the field were pretty negative, which actually left us in uh tenth position. Yeah. And uh I think we were we were looking really, really shaky, which of course led to Rob Edwards being sacked and Slavin Bilic being appointed. 
which um, I I obviously <laughs> it's really beggars belief what the <laughs> what the owners were thinking with that decision, but. Uh, on a more positive note, obviously, João Pedro and Imran Lauza did uh, sign some new deals with the club, which is yeah. nice to see, um, which probably would have bumped up both of their transfer values uh, coming the end of the season, which we'll see with João Pedro. So, yeah. James, moving on into October, probably our our best month uh, of it's the it, season yeah. as far as results go. So uh, talk us through, talk us through um, October. Yeah, I think you're right. I think October, um, if I was to summarise October, it was the uh, on-off month. Yeah, but, but it was probably the best. You're right. It's the best month. We had some, we had some incredible results um, in 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 that month, in, both in terms of performance and, and scoreline as well. You know, um, Bilic's first game in charge was the Stoke City game, four nil. Yeah, and I know Stoke were poor that day, but watching the highlights back and you know. We 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 really sort of tore into them, really. Yeah, you know, some great goals were scored. You know, we saw we saw sort of the, we saw Davies. I know he'd scored previously. He scored his first goal for um, the club in the Sunderland game in, in uh, yeah. the previous game actually. But you know, it, that's where he sort of started really bullying players, and, and he sort of scored that great sort of left footed drive. Yeah, and so we started started the month well with that four 0 win, and I think everybody thought, okay. That's the Watford we wanted to see, mm. um, and that's the Watford we know that that existed. But then we followed it up with with a two one defeat to Swansea. I was at that game. That was the one where we had twenty minutes of added time um, because the referee sort of forgot that he had a whistle, <laughs> so he could still referee. Um, but he decided he wanted to get his microphone fixed. So and and that 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 break in play happened when we were one nil up. Yeah. We weren't sort of. We weren't sort of doing particularly well. Um, we weren't sort of battering Swansea, but Swansea also weren't necessarily um, no, no, offering anything really, offering too much that day. But yeah, then play re- play resumed, and we conceded two goals in 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 that injury time, if that makes sense. Mm. Lost that game, and then and then you spoke about the Blackburn game being the the first of the awful performances of the season. Well, the trip up to Blackpool probably isn't too much further. Um, Ahead of ahead of the black black yeah, burn, yeah. And sort of getting thumped three one, and it, it it was it was a great free kick from loser, but the the defensive implosion in the sort of the the final sort of ten minutes of that game really did sum up um, Watford's season. To be yeah, honest, yeah, yeah. I know it, I know it was still relatively early in the season, but yeah, it kind of it kind of showed exactly how brittle and fragile we were. But anyway, we went again. And then we had the Norwich game, and, and you know we love playing Norwich. Uh, I'm sure we'll talk about the, the game away in in January in a, in a minute or two. But um, that was again, we were two 0 up, and, and we were playing great football. Some great goals scored. We missed a penalty, and and then uh, old uh, Josh Sargent popped up with his obligatory goal for the season, of course, uh, against us, and uh, and it was uh, sort of back up and running really, because the performance was gr- the performance was good that game. You know, I, I think that's kind of the theme for this month we had good performances followed by abject ones and what happened after the Norwich game it was the Millwall game the loser broke his leg um we had a little bit of a makeshift side with some injuries uh, in there and uh, we got absolutely turned over 3-0 uh, yeah. right so um and it was pretty horrendous and then if i'm right in thinking we had a we had the international break i think it was uh, yeah. and then and then there was then there was the next game. Oh, um, can't remember who it was, but we we <laughs> turned up. We did them four nil, um, and yeah, they were pretty garbage that day. Whoever we were playing, mm. um, so a real, real turning over kind yeah, of performance. You mustn't forget that. they were all very ill beforehand. Oh in yes, the week before. Yeah, that's right. They they had a little bit of uh, yeah, a bit of a cold, <laughs> um, and I th- so we did them four nil. And it was that was yeah I think that's the highlight of the season isn't it yeah really yeah. Um, that was that was also in my opinion that was the game where we saw just how good Jao Pedro was as oh a football. yeah oh yeah I know I know he only scored one but, but wow um, yeah it's 
I've little seen bit. a lot of people say it's the best individual performance they've seen uh, from a Watford player, and I have to agree that the, his highlight reel from that game is just unbelievable. Oh yeah, I completely agree with you. Um, in terms of sort of technical ability, yeah, I know I know some of the older generation Watford fans might might say different in terms of individual performances, yeah. but in in my living memory, I I, I don't think I've seen a, a performance sort of quite like that. No, no. And then we followed up the month um, with a one 0 win away at Wigan. Uh, so yeah, real highs and lows, no consistency. But no. in my in in my opinion, for the wins we got performance wise. Um, I think October was was right up there. Uh, yeah, for the month. Yeah, and no, then, I uh, agree. We, f- we finished the month in I think it was seventh. I think, I think yeah, we did finish in seventh at, at the end of that month. I just remember feeling sort of as a loser came on towards the end of the Stoke game and bossed the midfield and obviously got that assist for Bio for the fourth goal, and then it just felt like you know loser was that missing key that we were lacking. And then, you know, it was a real blow to see him break his, uh, break his ankle against Millwall, who are obviously just Watford's kryptonite team. For, <laughs> for some reason this season, um, we got absolutely battered by him twice. Really unfortunate to see him break his leg. Um, yeah, a bit of a freak one, wasn't it, really? Really strange, yeah. He just blocked the, blocked the cross as it came in and he just... Planted yeah. his ankle, didn't he? Yeah, it was really a really unfortunate um, way for him to miss out quite a lot of the season um again having missed the start of the uh the start of the season through uh I think it was a knee ligaments injury yeah. but moving on into November we carried on that good form um <clears throat> to make it three wins in a row away at Cardiff and yeah, yeah I just yeah. remember thinking that game just well done to all the Watford fans that made it because I believe there was a crash uh at some point uh, on the way, so a lot of Watford fans actually had to turn around and go home. Real trek midweek, wasn't but, it? Yeah, a real trek, but 2-1 win, and Watford scored from two corners, which is unheard two, of from Watford. <laughs> two corners, and and looking at the fixtures, oh no, I think there's only other. I think there's only one other, and um, it was a come from behind win. Yeah. The only, yeah. I think the only other one was the Middlesbrough game at the mm. start at the end of August. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, after that, we sort of there's a frustrating one losing one nil to Coventry, uh, who at the time ha- were having a little bit of a, a resurgence in form, having had a really slow start to the season. Uh, obviously, Vic uh, scoring the goal against us, and then yeah. we had Reading at home, quite possibly one of the worst teams that came to the Vicarage oh. Road this season. Uh, yeah. We dispatched yeah. them easily. As El Pedro scoring a brace, we did. Mm. Like, and, I, was uh, that, like, I was at that game. As, uh, was at that game as well. Um, again with uh, with uh, with my mate Nick, and uh, I think that was the that for me was the sign that there were sort of issues because yes, I mean Reading didn't turn up. They they, they just you know. They were really poor, but we made real hard work. Even though it was two 0 we we didn't yeah. play particularly. No, no, no. And it was a João Pedro penalty, and then and then we we scored sort of one on the break. Yeah, uh, to win. It it really felt like that was, um, that was how the season was gonna was gonna go. To be honest, either teams would not not show up, or or it would be ninety minutes of us trying to break a team down. We yeah. Would play and then we might we might sneak on. It, we we really started to see the slow tempo and the and the sort of the the methodical plodding of of, <clears throat> of the pitch. Yeah, it's a weird one. It did feel like one of those games where in other seasons we'd have you know hit them for five or six. Uh, we just really struggled to break them down, which was a real theme throughout the rest of the season. Uh, it's particularly lower teams that came to Watford hoping for a point. But yeah, uh, we finished that month, November, with a nil-nil draw away to Bristol City, and of yeah. course, uh, Cafu ruptured his Achilles in that game. Yeah, that was a real shame. Yeah, which was actually you know, a massive blow given how well he actually stepped into playing right back from centre mid, um, yeah. which is a real shame. And then obviously, the World Cup break happened, and. To be honest, um, 
heading into that World Cup break, it didn't feel like we were doing awfully. Um, no, not at all. We it were, felt like... you know, fourth in the league, and um, yeah, it just it felt like we we were kind of just plodding through. We weren't really doing a lot of damage to those further up than us. But you know, looking through October and November, we had a lot of wins under our belt, and certainly more so than August and September. And we would just sort of could have pushed on, having had that little break uh, in between the World Cup. Well, yeah, yeah. It, I, I remember that vividly. I remember us thinking we'd had a bit of a shaky start, um, but you know we had Billich. We were starting to win games. It really felt like the the World Cup break had actually come at a good time for us because we'd had a few players out injured, and um, you know we we'd be getting closer to the January transfer window, so we might be able to get a few few extra players in. Mm. Um, and it felt like okay, well, if they go away, they have a good uh, sort of good training camp because we didn't have that many people go go to the World Cup. Mm. If we, if we sort of go and, and do some work, and, and we can sort of hit the ground hit the ground running because oh, how foolish were we mm. looking at the fixture list, the December fixture list, as we'll talk about in a minute? They were winnable games. We yeah. could have really, we could have really kicked on. Very winnable games. So, moving on to December. Oof. We made a decent number of signings in December, and I think majority of that was because of the abhorrent injury crisis that we went through. Uh, yeah. Kone signed, Bakuna and uh, Martins also signed. Uh, obviously, yeah. they did not um, feature until January when the window opened. So, this month, um, we play, We started off first game back from the World Cup and it was just the most pre-season friendly game I think we've ever watched. Oh. It was a terrible game of football and it was about minus 3,000 at Vicarage Road that day. It was brutal, wasn't it? That was a, It was a miserable game of football. Hmm. Terrible. <laughs> really miserable. It's, it's so, so bad. <laughs> and uh, obviously uh, the cult hero Ray Manai missed probably... One of the easiest <laughs> oh, chances I, I've ever ha- seen, <laughs> which is a yes. real shame. Then did his hamstring and went back off uh, about two yeah. minutes later. So after that, we were a bit like, Oof. Um, thought we'd kick on after after the World Cup finished. Hull was a bit of a warm up, and then you know we were straight back in it. Huddersfield away, Zhao yep. Pedro really stepped up in this game, scoring two goals. And uh, I just remember did, yeah. Delhi Bashirin made that really, you know, dynamic run through the centre of the field um, for the for the first goal, and Brilliant. then we really fell apart <laughs> towards the end of December. Millwall at yeah. home, two uh, 0 loss on Boxing Day. That was one of those um, where you just, why did I pay ten pounds to watch that? I think, yeah, I think you knew from sort of about the fifth minute that Millwall were going to walk all over us. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then, of course, Jao Pedro uh, got his ankle injury, which put him out for eight weeks. Um, And I think really we looked very limp going forward uh, in the following game. And a lot of Watford fans went to Swansea that night to see us drop a possible minus out of 10 and lose 4 0. It was. Probably the worst performance, other than Luton away, that I've seen Watford put in for a, a long time. A long time. Well, a long time at this level. Absolutely, mm. yeah. It was that was that was a shambolic performance. Really poor. Um, so yeah. Any other comments uh, for December, James? I think uh, the only thing I would sort of say about the final two games, the Millwall and Swansea games, was I think that was where we really started to see. Um, the, the mental fragility in in the squad because uh, the Millwall game was where Cameron got sent off, wasn't it? He did he push? Yeah, yeah. He just had face. a moment of madness. Yeah, and so he sort of lashed out, and uh, you know he he took he took some pelters for that, and quite yeah. rightly so. Yeah, I I think um, that was a a reflection though. I think he just lashed out, but it was more so a reflection of how frustrated yeah, um, totally. the players were, how like how poorly they were playing um, mm. and just how poorly the season had gone really up to that Absolutely. point. It just felt we yeah, were yeah. stuck in first gear, couldn't get out of it. 
and yeah. I think the, that that moment really sort of summed up uh, the season at that point and how frustrated he was. Um, this is how poorly we were we were and playing. It also, it also felt like um, Millwall showed the blueprint to sides coming to Watford. Oh uh, yeah. On, on how to uh, on how to just completely stop us, you know, wind us up, slow it down, be aggressive, um, and uh, and and you'll get something out of out of us, particularly yeah. at home. Yeah, yeah. And, and 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 Swansea was just, yeah, that was it was that was abysmal because I know I know we had about twenty one players out injured or something ridiculous. What yeah. was the what what was it at one point sixteen? Yeah, sixteen first team players. We had you know all those players out injured, but. You know, as everybody pointed out, you still got eleven professional footballers out on the pitch. Oh yeah, the min- the minimum no, the, there's no excuses. Work rate. Yeah, the minimum that we'd expect is people to run about, and, and they uh, didn't even do that. Yeah, and they and they sort of they definitely piled it in. So that was that was alarm bells. That was alarm bells, and then absolutely so. As all football fans do, uh, we go well. It's all right because uh, now it's January and we've got a uh, we've got a transfer window. Hmm. So January, probably looking at our notes, was actually a really busy month for, for oh, the Hornets in terms a of a lot to talk about. A lot to talk about in terms of transfer. So as I mentioned, Kone, Bakuna, and Martins officially signed for the club. Um, then Ferreira, Araujo, and Porteous, Sombolonga, and Wesley Hoot also signed. Obviously, <laughs> Porteous uh, what kicked on to be. Uh, a fantastic player. Uh, same with Hoot on the whole. Um, we haven't really seen a lot of uh, Ferreira. I think he's been troubled with injuries. Yeah, shame, uh, really. Cause... Yeah, real shame because he scored that really nice goal against Rotherham, which we'll uh, we'll talk about in a, in a couple mm. minutes. And yeah, it was just a real busy month. Um, we had a couple of people leave. Uh, I think Ray Manai was released in January. The Crow left on loan. Um, Trusta Kong left to go to Sally... Sally... Sally Tana. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, my pronunciation and my eyesight is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, also Joe Hungbo left to Huddersfield on loan. Um, so I think on the whole, the transfers this month were very positive um they seem to be addressing a lot of issues in the side particularly our defensive um you know how abject we were defensively so to bring in two fairly decent center backs uh was nice to see and yeah i think the only real weird signing was the sombolonga i just felt like it was a end of the end of the market we need a striker and they brought him in Obviously, he had the nostalgia factor as well. But yeah, on the whole, a fairly positive um, January transfer window. And to be honest, I'm looking at the results. We had five games played, two wins, a draw, and two losses. However, one of those was in the FA Cup. So Mm -hmm. results-wise, it was a fairly positive month. Um, We played... An absolute blinder away at Norwich. Um, that was a great game. In our accustomed three points against Norwich. That was, yeah. Mario was, Gaspar in, uh, in midfield. In midfield. <laughs> and he, he played absolutely fantastically as well. You know, it was a real, real dogged performance. We dug in. James Morris played fantastically. Keenan Davis was unbelievable uh, until he went off injured. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You know, people like Kalu looked sharp and then he went off injured. And then Cabasele was doing all right in defence and then he went off injured. Um, yeah. But yeah, it really felt like the team had stuck together. So many Watford fans made the made the journey and they were rewarded with a fantastic win on the road. And it was no, like, the, the Watford fans deserve nothing less um, than that game. It really showed and it was so positive after how little effort they put in at Swansea to yeah. come out away at Norwich and you know dig out a a 1-0 win with Bio who almost missed you know almost missed it and I think uh, yeah yeah he did almost miss it didn't he but I think I think it was it was a real battling game wasn't it but the goal was 
so full of quality, wasn't it? Yeah. You know, the Esprit was, ball, yeah, was sorry, the best. Ball, and then the Norwich uh, defender who sort of lunged for him and he, and he got the touch and then and then the cross uh, to uh, to Bayou was inch perfect. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know, I know Bayou did his best to miss it, but, um, <laughs> but, but uh, yeah, that, that was brilliant. That was a real highlight of the month. Yeah, uh, such me. a highlight of the month. Um, other other results wise, we have to speak about Blackpool. Adeyemo coming off the bench Whoa. to make his professional debut and scoring Le- in the seventy second minute on the Graham Taylor match day. Just what a what a historic moment for the football club and what a way to celebrate the Graham Taylor match day with with a seventeen year old scoring his first goal for for Watford. You know, yeah. a really incredible moment and a fantastic well done to him. And obviously yeah. a nicely taken Saar penalty. I think somebody at some point over the season taught Saar how to take a penalty. Yeah, he started. And he started, started bagging before. them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, that was yeah, one, sir. Yeah. No, no, it's all right. Uh, just, I just wanted to say uh, that was also the day that Jack Greaves made his debut, becoming, you know, the fourth generation in the Greaves family household to represent yes. Watford, which is another, you know, amazing sort of storytelling moment for, for that game. And, you know, that was probably one of the, the highs towards the end of the season, just how fan, you know, how amazing it was for so many stories to sort of conclude in that way. And it really felt like it was a nice win and um, just another one of those sort of poorer teams that we finally put to bed. And then, of course, doing the most Watford thing possible, we then draw at home to Rotherham in a mm. game we needed to win to keep up pace with the top of the league. And we just didn't do it. And we didn't push no. on. We didn't try hard enough to, to get that winner. Um, but Jao Ferreira came on, scored a lovely goal uh, for his first in a Watford shirt. Yeah. And, yeah, that... There were probably a couple of positives. Obviously, you were at the game, James. So, yeah. why don't you talk us through a little bit about uh, Rotherham and the rest of the month? Well, uh, yeah, I was at I was at the game, and, and I think uh, this is where um, we really started to see Watford struggle with sort of uh, lesser teams. And I, I mean that in the nicest possible sense. To yeah, yeah, smaller teams, I should say. Uh, teams at the bottom of the table who just knew what what to do mm. um you know that they, they they sat in deep they frustrated us they scored um they scored a goal from sort of their only real attack in the first half um and it was kind of a it, it was a sort of relatively well taken goal um mm. and then and then that that was that was kind of it really uh and yes yeah, second half we got the goal from ferreira um who you know he looked really, he looked really sharp. He looked good, mm. um, and it was it was a really well taken finish. And, and you just wanted, you know, the momentum that 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 goal brought because it was perfect. It was right, it was right at the start of the second half, I think. Yeah. And you just wanted the momentum to to build in the side, and and it never came. And um, that was kind of it, really. And the, the draw happened, and it just felt like, you know, we'll we'll talk about us letting uh, points and games slip by mm. um, uh, in in. in the remainder of the pod, I'm certain, but that was kind of where it all started to uh, to unravel, in my opinion, yeah. uh, because you know, looking at looking at the fixtures and, and what had happened, if if we'd have just gone and beaten Rotherham, then we'd have won three another three league games on the bounce, and, and the momentum that that would have that, that would have uh, would have brought us. I also think because um, we'll talk about sort of talk about Billich, you know, it would have meant that he would have navigated. Probably one of the worst injury crises is in the top yeah. leagues in England, mm. and he, you know, there's a real potentially could have come out with it with with nine points um, mm. Mm. from the start of the month, but he didn't. And then, you know, we dropped points at Rotherham, and then we knew we were going up to Middlesbrough against a side that were were absolutely flying at that point. Yeah. Um, and to be honest, uh, I just knew we weren't gonna. I remember at the time thinking, "There's no way we're gonna get anything out of this game." Oh yeah. And uh, and we didn't. Uh, and we lost two 0 And uh, I couldn't tell you anything about the game because, uh, frankly, I must have been doing something else because uh, I certainly wasn't watching yeah. that game. <laughs> yeah, uh, it was a real abject performance um, again. 
Uh, yeah. So February came and went really. Um, we started it with three draws in a row. Yeah. Most notably, a real poor performance in giving away two points to Reading away. Uh, the, f- the start of really dropping points from winning positions. Then Blackburn, I believe we did well to come back from um, from 1-0 down. We, we were 1-0 down, but again, Blackburn actually didn't play well that day either. No. I think, I think, I think he dominated the, the entire game, uh, you know, from, from memory. Yeah. But we should have, you know, we should have capitalised on that. That's another team that was sort of falling away at that moment as well, who yeah. we sh- who we should have really gone after. Um, then Burnley, probably one of the most frustrating games. We dug in; it felt like another Norwich away. We did well. We took the lead and we defended amazingly. And then just the ninety sixth minute to to concede in such a silly way was so. Heartbreaking, and yeah. I, I don't. I can't imagine that would have done any amount of good to, uh, you know, to the morale of the team to come away it so close. It felt like a loss almost to uh, to concede in that in that way. Um, but I do have to say, uh, my mate is a Burnley fan, and we did take four points off off this season. So, um, <laughs> who's the real winner here? Yeah. Then moving on. West Brom at home was a weird one. Really weird. Um, it almost didn't really feel like we won the game. Um, obviously, <laughs> we did. It was just a really... It, we, it seemed like we tried so hard to give West Brom the three points at times. Yeah. And yeah. thank goodness for Ken Semmer that we uh, that we came away with three points. And then yeah, we, we ended the month with a, a, just a nothing game against Sheffield United, losing 1-0. I don't remember that game at all, <laughs> to be honest with you. I, I think I was doing something else on that day. Um, yeah, but well, I, I don't I think I missed anything, really. No, he didn't know it. I, I, I watched the Shepherds United game, and it was, it, was, it was a close game. I think they scored. It was, I think it was an own goal in the end. Yeah, it was a set. It was I think corner. So. Uh, it, was, it was kind of one of those games. I remember sort of thinking, uh, I remember being disappointed that we lost, but yeah. I wasn't. I wasn't sort of like, oh, we we really let that one slip. Yeah, yeah. Um, because I don't think we did. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so that was February. Was, February was kind of a really weird month. Yeah, um, a real because, a real strange one. Because I think you know, some of those games, you know, if uh, we we probably you know it was, it, it, there was probably sort of three matches where we were in the lead for maybe you know. The, 250 minutes of the games do you know what I mean yeah, <laughs> and yeah. we ended up we ended up only winning one of them which um, a real a real telling sign to the end of the season as to what was to come yeah. but uh, February was the start of the fall off really I mean going from January into February we dropped from fourth in the league to um to eighth I mean, you know gaining uh, only six points in the month of February but where we had probably three games that you'd expect to be winning um, at that time, anyway, with with the form um, that, that uh, other teams had going around us, uh, we'd have definitely expected to beat Blackburn as well as Reading and obviously West Brom. So yeah, it was the start of the the start of the fall off from Watford, and then we carried on that real run of poor form um, into March, where probably you know this gives Hull a good run for its money at home. We watched yeah. this together, and it was absolutely terrible. And um, I can't believe, you know, <laughs> how poor we were that day. It just seemed like no one was interested. No one from Preston was interested, and neither team looked like scoring within. You know, we could have played oh. another ninety minutes, and no team would have scored. What was the only, uh, putting you on the spot here a bit, mate? What was the only thing that came out of that draw, or well, that game, I should say? Oh, well, I think the game, well, immediately after that, Slaven Bilic was sacked. He was sacked. And Uh, as we all know, as soon as Slaven Bilic was sacked, the emergency pod bell was rung (laughs) and the Yellow Square podcast was born. And uh, we have not looked back since, have we, James? No, we haven't, no. 
but it, it was one of those games where, where I think we decided, right, <clears throat> we need to have our say on this mess. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it kind of, the anger of it all and, and everything sort of built up and we thought, right, let's talk about it. So, yeah. Yeah. Here we are. Here we are today. But, yeah, you're right. Bilic was sacked and Chris Wilder was appointed. And, obviously, uh, he did not get off to a good start. QPR was... away and it was terrible. Absolutely terrible. And QPR had won maybe one game since October at that point. We're into March. And, of course, they score and beat us 1-0. And it was one of those, another one of those games where as soon as we went 1-0 down, I did not think we'd get anything out of it. Not, not we just chance. looked not really chance. rubbish. And then we bounced back really well. You were at the Birmingham game, James. 3-0. Oh, and we oh, blew them away. We absolutely blew them away in the first sort of uh, twenty minutes. It was, yeah, it was it was a it was a completely different Watford side um, to to what we'd seen previously, and and Birmingham had no answer. Uh, you know, some some great goals, some nice football, um, and you, you know, yeah, it was like, oh, okay, there's signs there, uh, and I remember people thinking, oh, okay, all we need to do now is we just need to back that up with with a result at Wigan in the, at the end of the week and, and things will start to turn around and because you know we could have been 3 or 4-0 up um, by half-time in that game. Yeah, I, remember, yeah. I remember sitting, I was in the Sir Elton John stand um, almost directly behind Ngakia's shot as it... As it uh, Crushed off the post, yeah. Crushed off the post. I'm surprised it didn't dent it. He absolutely <laughs> fell. Um, I suppose, yeah, I would say probably March was the was the rise of Ngakia for a very brief period. <laughs> he uh, he came into the side and was and was playing some great stuff. Yeah, in there. But uh, would you believe it didn't last? <laughs> yeah, and we followed Birmingham with the kind of kind of similar performance. To be honest, the first <laughs> half we played really nice football. Uh, oh. Pedro had that chance that he should have taken. Keenan Davis scored a lovely goal, and then we sort yeah. of did the same thing that we did in the Birmingham game and we let them get into the, into the game in the second half and um, James McLean managed to get a goal um, for for Wigan and of course then they were always going to dig in and try and grind out the point um, which is a real frustrating moment where Watford should have dominated that game as we did in the first half scored another goal, put it to bed but of course we had to give Wigan a sniff and of course after that they uh, got back into the game and took a point away from the Vic. So, mm. April. And uh, yeah, April let's just, let's just move on. was a real, a real, real bad month for Watford. Um, it was horrible, wasn't it? We, I feel like just skipping the whole month of April, to be honest. But um, <laughs> there are some uh, real key moments, really, aren't there? Kicking things off um, with a 2-0 loss. Can't remember who that was against. Then yeah, Huddersfield not... at home and the anger from Watford fans was yeah, incredible on that day. It was just, it had boiled over to a, a, a crazy level that I'd never, I've never seen him, you know, the time that I've spent following and watching Watford, it was, you know, it really boiled over, uh, which is a real shame because Aspria scored a great goal, his first goal for yeah. the club. And then we yeah. just did such a Watford thing and gave three goals away. And 3-2 is probably quite flattering for Watford because of how poor we were that day. And all I could say was it summed up the season when Dan Batman got sent off for two yellow cards in two minutes for a, fl- uh, a flying kung fu kick and descent. Um, <laughs> which yeah, was... It, it, yeah. It, April, was, April was just a calamitous month. It was club, so terrible. It? Yeah, really bad. So, you know, you had you had Chris Wilder sort of coming out and saying the things that all the fans wanted to hear. Yeah. Then, then we had uh, the rumours of uh, was it Farioli? Yeah, um, yeah, Fabioli coming in. The, the club had to come out and uh, defend um, defend Wilder and say the claims are nonsense. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, you're right, in, interspersing all of this was the whole Pozzo Out movement starting to grow, uh, banners, uh, um, fire certificates, um, 
all sorts of stuff was going on. It really did feel like after Luton to be followed up with uh, that performance against Huddersfield. Uh, th- that was the. I think that was where the fans just ha- had had enough. Yeah, I say. really had we enough. Spoke we spoke about that in in the pub, didn't we? We did. Uh, yeah. But I think yeah, that that was the moment where everyone just decided that actually this is this is just this is now unacceptable. Yeah. The way that we the way that the players are performing, the way that the club is being run. Um, and yeah, that, I think that was a real milestone for for Watford under the Potsos. Yeah, because I mean, looking through the season, we 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 really just won, drew, lost pretty much every game on the whole. And I just I think it wasn't particularly that performance on its own. It just it was just the sort of you know boiling up over the season, just the mm-hmm. disappointment, and then to have the anger because of how bad that particular day was. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it was definitely not just you know, oh, we've lost to Huddersfield. This is unacceptable, but more so just the whole how badly we'd been over the season, how badly we'd been run for the past two seasons in a row now. Yeah, and I think fairly, you know, it was fair for Watford fans to be so angry. But we'll move on from Huddersfield, and after that was Coventry away. I went to this game, mm. and. You know, it was actually quite good. We looked really solid for about 60 minutes. Obviously, we were 2-0 up. It was unbelievable limbs when João Pedro scored after five minutes. You know, a lot of Watford fans made that journey on the bank holiday Monday. Mm. And it felt like, you know, we were finally going to be rewarded with a solid performance and a decent win. We had we were winless in three in the league. And, mm. you know, it well and truly felt like the, the wheels had fallen off the bus at that point. So... It was nice to go 2-0 up and then we did the Watford thing and conceded two goals and drew the game to all. Probably should have lost it. We sh- probably should have lost it, yeah, um, if we didn't have a very, very nice referee who uh, did not give a penalty against us. <laughs> um, so, moving on from that, we then finished that month with a 2-0 win over Bristol City. That was fairly routine. <laughs> Again, yeah. it felt like one of those games where in previous seasons it could have been 3-4-0. Bristol City didn't really offer anything. Um, it just felt like, you know, we were kind of struggling a bit laboured to get the ball going and to score um, a couple more goals to really put the game uh, aside and show our dominance on uh, on that particular day. Then it was two dreadful losses in a row. Cardiff 3-1 at home to... To capitulate in the way we did was terrible. You were at the game, James. Yeah. What was it think, like? Um, so I think we've spoken about the uh, the anger of the Luton and, and Huddersfield games. Yeah. Uh, and the outpouring of emotion. Cardiff, I think. Uh, well, it's difficult to. I mean, it, it's the most toxic Vicarage Road, I think. Um, I have ever come across yeah and uh, I think the only thing that would have made it more toxic would have been if uh fans had actually bothered to turn up um, oh, and yeah. I'm not that's that's in no that that is by no means any disrespect to what the fans they have absolutely no right to turn up to these games um uh, as you know I I go to midweek games because it's close to to my work so it's convenient mm. for me yeah, yeah, yeah. Any, so uh you know, if you don't have a season ticket, or you know, why why would you go? Um, yeah, why would you waste the money? It's the only thing that would have made it worse is if 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 he had a full vic. Um, yeah, it was a, it was an absolutely shambolic performance mm. uh, from from mm. about twenty minutes onwards because Cardiff were coming to Watford to maybe sneak a point because they were battling off relegation. They posed no threat for 20 minutes. We scored a lovely goal. Yeah, and lovely. Then, and, then, and then, again, uh, we've repeated ourselves quite a bit so far, it feels, but Cardiff managed to score a goal and then all of a sudden, everything that we've been speaking about for the previous weeks came flooding back and we capitulated and we conceded three in 10 minutes, I think it was. Yeah. And, uh, and, and sort of that was it. And it was a real... Oh, it was a real watershed moment in the ground. I think the players uh, sort of firmly knew what was going on. And uh, they would have been told how uh, 
band who they performed at full time, but we couldn't because the PA system uh, <laughs> was, was cranked up. Cranked up. Uh, yeah, so that was horrendous. Uh, and uh, that was my memory of the Cardiff game. Yeah, <sighs> following on from that was another terrible loss away at Hull. Uh, most notably, I angered the entirety of Hull Twitter that week. Um <laughs> It was just another terrible game of football. Uh, Hull scored a penalty. That was it. That was it. Some bloke um, scored that penalty. Can't remember who that was. And And we, sorry, we were just we were at this point where we were at our lowest in the championship, thirteenth place. It felt like we were in absolute free fall at that at that moment. Um, Yeah. It felt like we could have slid further down. I mean, if the if the uh, league was maybe 10, 15 more games on. We could have been in real, real trouble um, uh, if it if it had continued to go on that long. But yeah, we just we really, really did not seem to have any kind of attacking intent or be able to defend at that at that point. And um, I think yeah, the uh, the vibe from April was probably one of the worst months that I've ever had following Watford. I would agree. Totally agree with you on that one. I think the worst thing was, because um, uh, now we're at the end of end of April, there's only one more game to go, and I think we all know how that ended. Mm. Uh, the worst thing about looking back at April with the results was that we finished six points outside the playoffs and we dropped seven... We, we were winning... Was it seven points? Was it five points? We dropped five points uh, from winning positions in those games. And then if you go back... To the uh, to the end of March with that Wigan game, if we'd have just held on in in those games, um, we'd we'd have made the playoffs, which is which is a farce uh, if I'm being nice because we absolutely had no <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, um, uh, but you know that's that's the worst thing about it. It wasn't like you know we were we we were clinging on for life in those games and we managed to snaffle a point. We were winning and comfortable in in a number of those games, and we uh, we absolutely capitulated and fell apart. Yeah, uh, I, think, I think that's kind of where a lot of the anger and frustration uh, came from as well. Yeah, crazy, but, crazy. A lot of you know, if, it was just a real, really bad month. Um, yeah. I, I don't really want to carry on going through April, um, but. We finished the month uh, two all draw at Sunderland. Another one of yep. those games where we took the two nil lead again. Watford scored two goals from two corners, which was incredible. Um, and a brand new Porteous at Chant was introduced, which is fabulous. Um, I know you're not going to get a rendition of it. No, I'm not uh, going to ask for it. <laughs> but no, yeah, another moment where we sort of threw it away. It was an absolute wonder goal in the last moments of the game. But yeah, uh, real, real another another disappointing game to uh, concede two goals from a winning position. Uh, I think it just links back to that real frail mindset that the the, the team Fits. had at that moment. And then with our final month, we moved into May with our a hundred percent win record. Um, yep. Obviously, the best month of the season because of that. <laughs> Um, most notably, João Pedro obviously left the club and signed for Brighton. Um, in other news, Kamara confirmed his departure, having been sold yeah. to Udinese for sixteen million and <laughs> then being loaned back to Watford. Um, yeah. We finished the season in a, in a, in a positive way. Um, yeah. Two 0 win at Stoke um, with Lauza and Davis scoring. Nice to see uh, Davis scoring on this final game. And, yeah, it was just a fairly positive way to end the season after a real torrid time in the Championship, especially from yeah. sort of February onwards. But, yeah, Absolutely. so that kind of leads us to present day where Valerian Ishmael um, was appointed to head coach. Yeah. Which will then lead us on into next season. Next season. Absolutely. And uh, Stoke, uh, the 2-0 win, uh, there was only one other team that we did the league double over uh, this season. Who was that? Of course it was Norwich. <laughs> Easy six <Yes>. points. <laughs> yes. Oh, 
and nope, uh, nope, yeah, I know nope. Norwich fans will be absolutely seething. I don't. I, they. I, I imagine they. Yeah. They dislike but, Watford as much as. Um, we dislike Millwall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. that is our yeah. season review for this season. This car crash of a season. Uh, we'll go there. We'll go there. Car crash of a season. James, final a final question to you for for yeah. this season. Out of ten, how would you rate the season? I think. Oh, I mean, I was about to give you a number without even thinking about it, uh, but I think I think it can't be higher than a three. Yeah, I will fair. say, I will, I will say it's a it's it's a three out of ten. Um, I think the I think the, the the three comes from, you know, there was a num there was a couple of positive results in there, you know, you, we beat Nor we beat Luton four 0 Yeah, yeah. There was there was you know, some really nice things that that, that the club did. Um, Adi Amo, the the youngsters breaking into the side, um, and you know. Well, to be honest, that's that's kind of it. And I know it's I know it's real negative, and and those who listen to us regularly, we're, we're genuinely we're really positive people, but we've, <laughs> yeah. not, we've not had much to talk about. No, uh, no, positive. no. Yeah, um, it's been a it's been a sort of I'm, real I'm, struggle. <laughs> I can't go any higher than than a three, a three out of ten. I think I think it it, it was a failure uh, across the board. Yeah, a massive failure, and I I'm just pleased that we managed to get the appointment in early um to have the transfer window and to build for next season and then we can put all of this behind when we blitz the league and finish first next season obviously that's what's going to happen well you can try and convince me next week when we do our our eat by sell episode listeners yeah so you've got that to look forward to um after that i think we're going to take a little bit of a break and Mm -hmm. we'll be right back at you for the start of next season um but we just wanted to say a huge huge thank you for the support on the pod the last pod on uh ishmael done unbelievably well um yeah you know it's been amazing to see the support grow for the pod so all we can say is thank you so much for listening taking your time out your day to uh just listen to us talk about Watford because Absolutely. ultimately we all love Watford and we're just hoping for you know for our sake we have a bit more positive uh, discussion next season um, I'm sure but yeah it's it's good content either way so you know <laughs> we're winning the YouTube game <laughs> but yeah thank you very much for listening this is a bit of a longer podcast than we're normally accustomed to so if you are here and you have listened all the way through Thank you so, so much. Um, And yeah, make sure you subscribe, leave a like, comment. Oh, what what should we, what should we, what should we say for the comments this, this week, James? Um, Comment your favorite month from this season. Um, I know there's not many good months to pick from, but comment your favorite month and uh, we'll, uh, we'll get into the comments to see some of the replies. But yeah, thank you very much for listening to this week and we will see you in the next one. Cheers, guys. Cheers now. See you later.